Rails console is an extremely useful tool. I use it all the time to uh, experiment with code, debug something, or as a nice interface to modify the database. In this episode, I want to give you some tips on how to get the most out of the console. Now, I generally use the shortcut command, Rails C, and a couple options I sometimes pass in is uh, production, which will start up in the production environment if I want to experiment with that, or a sandbox, and that will wrap it in a database transaction, so any modifications to the database you make here will be rolled back. This is really handy if you want to experiment with something without permanently changing the database. When I exit, it rolls it back. Now let me show you a few handy methods that Rails provides specifically for use in the console. One is the app method. This is useful for interacting with your application. You can call URL helpers on this, for example, products path. You see what that routes to. You can also make requests to your application. For example, I could submit a get request to that given path. By the way, the underscore here is a result of the last command. So in this case, the products path, uh, really useful. So if I submit this, it's going to trigger the products controller index action. That's a great way to see what queries are performed for different requests. Uh, but what else can we call on this app object? Well, let's see what type of class it is. It's an integration session object, which is normally used for integration testing, but it's great here in the console as well. If you check out the Rails guide for integration testing, you can see some of the methods that you can call on that app object. Change it to HTTPS, uh, follow redirects, and so on. And there's a lot more you could do here. You can uh, see what cookies were set. Uh, you can check the latest request or response object. Uh, maybe the headers on that response object, or we can uh, pretty print that output. Or maybe even check out the full body of the response, app.response.body. You can even inspect the instance variables that were assigned by the controller in the last request. So we can see what the uh, product's instance variable contained, maybe just see the size of it. So there you can see that contained a list of 26 products. Uh, this app object is pretty powerful stuff. Another helpful little method is the helper method. This gives you access to the view context, which you can call helper methods on, such as number two currency, and just try them out and see how they behave. And you can also call custom helper methods that you define in your Rails application here as well. But one thing that won't work is the params hash. So if you have a helper method that references the request parameters, that will raise an exception, basically saying it's trying to delegate this to the controller, but the controller is nil. To help fix this, there's another method that the Rails console provides called controller, which just returns a new application controller instance. Why this isn't hooked up to the helper, I'm not sure, but you can just set the controller for the helper like that, and then you can set the controller params to whatever you want. Let's say uh, foo is bar, and then that will be the helper params hash then. Now another handy console method is reload. Uh, this will pick up some changes that you might have made to your application since starting the console. For example, let's say the products uh, to param method isn't really working the way we want it to. We could just go to our product model and make the appropriate changes there. And now when we reload and call to param on the product again, it picks up those changes. This is a handy little trick, but I have noticed occasional issues with it. So if you're ever unsure, just stop and start the console to do a full reload. Now here's another tip. Uh, ever since Rails 3.1, Active Record will log its SQL queries straight into the console, which I find really useful and helpful, but if you want to disable it for some reason, you can do so easily by calling Active Record uh, base, setting the logger level to one, or really anything greater than zero, and then it won't log those SQL queries anymore. Now what if you want this or some other functionality to be the default behavior of the Rails console? Well, you can accomplish this by adding it to the .irbrc file in your home directory. So you can put Ruby code in this file that will be evaluated when IRB or the console loads. And you can see I already have some in here already to enable uh, tab completion in IRB. You could just try hitting tab on some classes and methods, kind of useful. And a save history feature just so it keeps the history uh, up to a thousand lines between uh, sessions. And also I like setting the prompt mode to simple just to make the interface a little cleaner. I encourage you to customize this file and really make it fit your preferences. For example, if you don't like that SQL query logging, you could enter in a line like this to disable it if active record base is defined. And now when starting up a new console session, that behavior will be the default. I'm just going to keep that line commented out though because I do like that logging behavior. 
Uh, something else you can define in here are methods. So we could maybe make a method called y that accepts an object and prints out that object into YAML format. Uh, there used to be a method defined that did this, but for some reason it's not available anymore. So now when we call y and maybe pass in a record model, uh, it will print it out in nice, pretty YAML format. The possibilities are really endless. We could do something crazy like this, where we define a method on every object where you can pass in the name of a method and it will open that method up in TextMate. So let's try this out. Now when I have some object, I can call mate on it and pass in a method name such as number to currency and that opens up that specific source file going to that specific method in TextMate. That is awesome. Now there are a lot of gems out there which are designed to work with IRB. One of my old favorites is HIRB or HERB and uh, this will display active record data in a nice table format. So let's try this out. Gem install herb to uh, get it. And then let's open up the Rails console and try requiring HIRB. And that doesn't work. It says it cannot find that gem, basically. So this is because Bundler locks down the gems that you can use in your Rails app to only those listed in the gem file. So one option is we can go to the bottom here and add herb to our gem file, but only for the development group. But I don't really like doing this because we need to add this to any Rails app that we want to use uh, this sort of utility gem in. And also what if other developers want to use different utilities? It's really more specific to my development setup rather than this Rails application. Well, there's a little hack you can add to your IRBRC file. I'll just paste in the code for this. Uh, I grabbed this from the Pride Bundle gem, which basically it just resets the gem specifications without the bundler hook. Uh, I don't know if there are any negative side effects of doing this, but it seems to work well for me, and it's the simplest solution I've seen. So now when I go into the Rails console, I can require her, but without any problem, and let's enable it. And now when I fetch some products, they display in a nice table output. Really pretty. Now if you want to enable her by default in the Rails console, you can do so with this bit of code. Basically, we see if Rails is defined, and then try requiring and enabling Herb, but we catch a load error just in case the uh, developer doesn't have it installed. Here are some other gems which you might want to try out. Uh, awesome Print will give you this AP method which you can pass an object to, and it'll print it out with colors and everything. So uh, let me uh, fetch a product and grab the attributes on this, and there you can see the output is nicely formatted and colorized. Another useful gem in the console is a clipboard. Uh, this will allow you to interact with the system's clipboard. You can copy um, some text and also paste it back in. Another handy gem is Method Finder. Uh, this is really great if you know there's a method that does a certain thing that you're trying to do, but you aren't sure what it's called. So let's say uh, we can call find method on a string and give it the output that we want, such as capital ABC, and that will give us all the methods which end up having that behavior. Another cool gem is uh, called Fancy IRB. You need to require it and then call Fancy IRB.start, and this will display the output results in line if it fits, so instead of displaying it on a separate line. Kind of cool. And then there's also the Word gem, which will colorize output. So you call Word.start after requiring it, and then you can see the true is now colors, colorized there, and any output will be colorized as well. If you want a compilation of many of these utility gems, check out the IRB Tools gem. I had a little trouble getting it working on my system, but if nothing else, it serves as a great resource for many of the different other utility gems that you might want to try out inside of IRB. And finally, an episode on the Rails console isn't complete without talking about Pry. This is an awesome replacement for IRB with many extra features. I don't have time to go into it here, but check out episode 280 for more information on how to get Pry working with Rails. And that finishes up this episode on the Rails console. Thanks for watching.